Hello and guten Tag, my name is Max, this is Mac and Modify and this is part 2 of the Bluetooth controlled Action Cam Slider project. In this part we will focus on the electronics and the software and we'll see what makes a slider tick. If you did not already check out part 1 of this series and also check out the updated Thingiverse project, I added the diagrams and an updated version of the Arduino sketch and the app to the project, so make sure you have the latest stuff to work with. So let's not waste time and get right into it. So this is fritzing. It's good for some basic PCB designs, but awesome for making this kind of diagrams. I opted for that because some people might have a hard time reading schematics. So we will have a look at our electronics. First we'll have a look at the parts. We have our stepper motors here represented by NEMA 17 stepper motors, but we will use our 24 BYJ48 stepper motors. Here we have our stepper motor drivers, which are A4988 stepper motor drivers. Then we have our Arduino Nano. We could also use a micro or even an Uno, would be a bit big. Then we have an HC05 Bluetooth module and on top, not connected, the buck converter. So let's have a closer look. As you can see, these stepper motors have four wires because they are bipolar. Our stepper motors we used are unipolar, but we can make them bipolar. I will show you how this works. And here are the exact colors you want to use. The first thing I do is connect the power lines. As you can see, we have a 9 volt source for our stepper motors and a 5 volt source for the rest of the electronics. Our stepper motors are made for 5 volts, but we can't use 5 volts since these stepper motor drivers only support voltages above 8 volts. So with these drivers, we have to use 9 volts. This is not great, but I'll later show you an alternative way. The stepper motor is connected to these four pins. Here is the 5 volt line for the logic and here is the 9 volt line for the stepper motor. As you might see, this ground pin and this ground pin are not connected, but these two are and to the same source. That's because the ground pins are connected on the PCBs, so it does not matter if you connect this one or this one, as long as you connect one of them. That's it for the top side of this stepper motor driver. On the bottom we have the sleep and the reset pin connected. We have to do this for this kind of stepper motor driver. And we have the direction and the step pin connected to these pins on the Arduino Nano. Next, our Bluetooth module, again connected to the 5V rail and the TX pin is connected to D8 and the RX pin is connected to D9. So now we have these two connections. The 5V rail is connected to the output of the step-down converter and the 8V line is connected to the input and to our power source. As a power source you could use a 9 volt battery for example. So now let's have a look how we can improve this because I don't like this solution with two power sources or with a buck converter and I would like to have everything powered from 5 volt which would be great because even the motors are made for 5 volts. The only thing preventing us from using 5 volts for everything are these stepper motor drivers. So what could we use instead of these a4988 stepper motor drivers. Well, we could use the DRV8834 stepper motor drivers. These are made for low voltages and work starting from 2.8 volts, I think. If we use these stepper motor drivers, we get rid of our 9 volt source and rid of the buck converter. Also, for these stepper motor drivers, you won't need to connect the reset and the sleep pin. Everything else stays the same. Oh, I missed the LED, the status LED. This status LED will show you if the slider is still doing a move or if it's finished. When the slider is finished with its move, this LED will turn off. While it's moving, this LED is turned on. Now let's have a look what this looks in real life. 
the first prototype I built was this version and we will convert it to this version. So let's have a look. This is what it looks like at the moment and now let's convert this. Here's a short time lapse of the soldering process. Just read the schematics and solder accordingly. Fun fact, this time lapse was shot with the A4988 version, which will be soon converted. So this is what your wiring should look like. It is not the cleanest soldering I ever did, but it will do the trick. What I added after the time lapse was the power line. Again, connect as shown in the schematics. Now let's test if this still works. The electronics is reassembled. I connected five volts to this line. As you can see, the Bluetooth module is blinking. So let's connect, connect, connected. Let's say we want to move 10 centimeters. Wheel diameter should be right um, from left to right. And yeah, let's make a test move. And this works. In my first test, the slider did do only two and a half centimeters, not 10. And I realized that these stepper motor drivers by default do one four steps, which you will have to correct in software, which brings me to the next part of this video, the software. Let's move over to the Arduino IDE and have a look. This is the program in the Arduino IDE. Most comments are in there now. So let's have a look. We want to change our steps per revolution for both motors. The default is 2038, which means full step with our A4988 stepper motor drivers. Since we switched to the DRV, we want to change this to four times this, which is 8152. That here. So. That's it. Wheel diameter for the new wheels, I think 25 should work fine. So now we did our changes. We could upload this and our slider would work. But I will show you this program a bit more in detail. We can set our default wheel diameter, our default move time, our default move way, our default move angle, the steps per revolution, the maximum speed, this does not really go higher than 500 and where our LED pin is. These default values are so we could add another switch and use this slider without a control app. But I did not do this yet. So moving on, we use soft serial for Bluetooth. That way we can debug it over serial while the Bluetooth is connected. If you would do it the classic way, then you would have to disconnect the Arduino from the PC connect the Bluetooth, test it, does not work, then disconnect the Bluetooth, reconnect the serial and so we don't have to do this and we can use this for debugging. For the simultaneous stepping, I use the Excel stepper library with our slider stepper connected on pin 11 and 12. One means it's connected with two wires to the Arduino and the rest is done by the stepper motor driver. Then we use the multi-stepper library. That way both steppers are better coordinated. Yeah, then some variables. Our setup for the serial and the soft serial. The serial again for debugging, but does not need to be there. So going into the main loop, it waits for a serial communication, passes the string and then decides what, what to do. It takes the first part of the string, makes it the com, if there's a zero, then the action is to set the wheel diameter, takes the variable, puts it into the standard value, and that's it for the zero, and then the move command. It controls if it is still moving, this is the moving state, and if it's still moving, it stops the move, sets everything back to zero, and waits for the next command. If it's not moving and gets a move command, it will start. If a speed is set, then this will be executed, which means calculating the speed for both axes. If no speed is set, the maximum speed is set. And after all this, it will set the new speed 
and the new angle and the position where it has to go and then the step run is called and the stepper does a step. This run command has to be called every loop. And it always controls if it is still moving. If it reached the destination, it will set is moving to zero and write to serial stop, to Bluetooth serial. And here's the parsing for the string. And that's it for the Arduino sketch. Just upload it as usual and then it's to the app. Here we are in the MIT App Inventor. You have to create an account and then you can make your own programs or just upload my program. You can do this by import AIA from my computer and then upload it and then you are in the project and can do your changes. Basically you can decide what you want to add on the left side. Just for example add a button, drag it in and then you can edit the text, edit the label and create your layout. But this is no tutorial on this software, so we will just have a quick overview. So this is what the interface will look like, roughly. You can always um, get a preview. If you install the corresponding MIT App Inventor app, then you can connect your smartphone to the app and have a live preview, which way you can see what it will look in the final version. So let's move over to blocks here, and then you see the, the real program. And this is what the program looks like. You don't program text in this app inventor. You just, again, drag and drop from the left side. Here is every element you used. And you can, for example, choose the disconnect button and then say, yeah, whatever, set, blah, 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 to whatever. This is the first initialization of the app. Here is our Bluetooth button and the status, Bluetooth status. And this is to set the wheel diameter. Everything should be pretty self-explaining if you have a closer look. Move time, move angle. That are always the buttons and what will happen if you push one of them. The run command takes all the variables, puts them into a string and sends them over by Bluetooth as does the test. Move left, move right, will move it a distance. You can set the default dif distance for each button push up here with move increment, which is set to five. So if you push the button once, it will move five millimeters. You can set this to whatever you like. And then having a look, this clock timer controls if new data has come in from the Arduino and then acts by setting these variables to false or to true. Yeah, and that is the app. That easy it can be. So I thought I might give you a quick tour on the app. It's pretty easy. First you connect your device. Choose your device. Uh, the slide is not turned on, so this will not work this time. It will show you if you are connected or disconnected. You can set your wheel diameter and your distance. At the moment, you have to move out of the field to set this value. So you type in your value, what you want to have, let's say 25, and then you have to tap another text field and then it's transmitted. Then you have a time slider. Here you can set a value from 0 to 60. And then you can choose seconds, minutes, or hours. Might change the hour slider later. Uh, 60 hours is a bit long for a time lapse. Then you can set the angle. The camera should rotate from 0 to 180. Here you have the option left to right or right to left, which direct direction you want your slider to slide. Watched from the back, the back is, is where the wheel is, so left to right will move this slider to the right. Then you have the run button. If you tap this, 
the actual time lapse will start. If you push test, it will do this move with the maximum speed it can. Then you have some arrow keys to move the slider left and right and rotate clockwise and counterclockwise. Here you see the last command that was send and here the status of the slider. And up here is a little info text. So now I hope you have a rough idea how everything works. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments here or in the Thingiverse project. Feel free to hit that like or the subscribe button. Happy printing and see ya!